We thank you, O oh God, for your word, because your word is sharp as any two-edged sword. Now, Father, as we come before you, your people, Father, we will only speak the words in which thou have given thy servant to speak. And Father, we thank you for this awesome day in the name of the Lord Jesus. You are mighty and all mighty, for your wisdom speaketh on this day. Yes. Father, we thank you now for life, health, and strength. We thank you, Father, for the process of this divine. And we bless your name and all the people who are on Facebook, our friends and family members and other ministries, we say blessings to you. And Father, increase the ministries and help our pastors, help our bishops, our elders, overseers, all the working people of God. Father, we say on this day to help them with your spirit of wisdom. Amen. We thank the Lord for this day. I thank him because we get up and Zion is yet on one accord. Father, I thank you for speaking through your wisdom. If you go with me shortly, uh, I'm going to bring you to Proverbs chapter 16. I'll only read a couple of verses there, but I admonish you to read the complete uh, chapter there, chapter 16 of Proverbs. And then we're going to go over to uh, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 10. And we're going to look at spiritual warfare. But in bringing the two together, we want to look at it from the perspective of using wisdom combined with spiritual warfare. And I feel the anointing of God. So if I act a little crazy on Facebook today, y'all forgive me. But Amen. this this seed is burning down in my sanctified soul. Amen. Here reads Proverbs chapter 16. I almost screamed because I said my son called chapter 16. I'm going to have to get up and do a dance right here in my house before I start this word. Hallelujah. But it was just as good because it was chapter 1, 20, two, uh, 2 through 32. So you all want to look at that and encompass that with this word on this morning. Chapter 16, verse 1 says, The preparation of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. The Lord have made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Thou hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Now go over to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 10. Paul says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. That is one power we wrestle against. Against other spiritual powers. Against those that rule in the darkness, the witches and the warlocks. The rulers of the darkness of this world, this world here, and I just read to you that God, he created everything against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, that's your weapon, having on the breastplate 
of righteousness. That's your weapon. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, this word of God. Above all, taking the shield of faith. First of all, you must believe that he is God before you can come to him. So you must have faith before you start the journey. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. Here is your armor, which is the word of God. And we must pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all preservation and supplication for the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth. Saints, you got to open your mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of this gospel. That's why Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For we all who are in this walk am ambassadors that have been in chains. We have been in chains for 400 years. That therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So yes, we see protests in the street because the right not only of the Constitution of the United States give you a right to address your grievances, but moreover, the word of God gives you to right, the right to speak boldly before him. <clears throat> I want you to write these words down and we will be coming to you later on uh, this week. I am beginning a teaching series uh, and it is is consider the matter. So when you hear that come up on Facebook uh, or on your other sites, we are looking more deeply, uh, more concentrated into efforts. And today we're looking at Wisdom Speaks. I want you to write down Marx, Marxism. Marxism. Why Marxists? Well, Marxism, and, and I'm going to define it for you, it is a system of ideas that lead to communism. Just as Paul, the great man of God, the Pharisee, who was taught in Tarsus, the word of God, he was taught it straight from the Torah as it was given to the prophets. <clears throat> he was taught by his fathers, and he was taught correctly. But often as we do, we will leave our father's home, and we will go out into this world on our own. And then we began to take on the other attributes and beliefs and ideologies in other cultures and society. So then we look at Marxism leading to a class of communism. So you say that we are a democratic, a democracy nation. Well, I want you to discover and answer for yourself. Look back in history, look at the totality of these circumstances and see for yourself where it is leading. I'm asking you to take on the seven spirits of God as God to give you the wisdom, his wisdom, not your wisdom, but the wisdom of God, give you his understanding and his knowledge and look at Marxism and dissect it and see what you find. <clears throat> I found it deals with classing people off and the primary role is to lead you into communism. The rich get richer and the poor get poorer. So what are we looking at? We're looking at slavery continue. Here we are 400 years with a thought and a process 
I thought that the African American man was less than. We looked at Israel, and Israel is, was in chains and bondage. Israel was in Egypt for 400 years, thought of as less than, <coughs> that they are not human. There is a piece of material you want to pick up, and it is called the making of a slave. And it goes through the psychological and the sociological efforts that were imputed upon the African nation that was brought over here to dehumanize them to a point that they felt hopeless loss. They felt they had no way of returning to their motherland. But God had a plan. This nation came into uh, the United States of America. This country was already populated. It was populated with the Indian nations. Now they're known as the indigenous people. I, I, I don't understand how a people can occupy a country and then they become the indigenous. <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. Amazing. But even when you look at that, you find the trickery, the betrayal that went on. You cannot believe what comes out of the mouth of a man, but you must look at his heart. God looks at his heart. So the question becomes, overseer, how do you look at a man's heart? Well, our great writer and poet says, when people show you who they are, you, you should believe them. The Bible says it this way, from a tree, watch what he bears, watch the fruit that is released. Then you will know who that man is. And interesting enough, people don't fall far from their character. The apples that fall from the tree are the type of tree that it is. If you find that a man consistency is a liar, then he's a liar. That's all. That's, that's not very hard, nor is it very deep. If you find that a man is one who cares and consistently distributes love, then you know that his fruit is that of love. Then you can identify who they are. Again, look at Marxism and look it up for yourself. Now, we have weapons of warfare. So here we have lawlessness in the land. We have people who have taken advantage an opportunity of the times that we are living in. We are peaceable people. We are people of God. We come in peace. We come in love. That is how Jesus came. They spat upon him. They crucified him. He never spoke a word against them. But what he said was, Father, if they had have known who I was, they would not have crucified your son and Lord, Jesus Christ. Ah. If they had have just known, they would not have crucified him. So what am I saying to you today, saints? If the wickedness that sits in power, they believe power. If they had have known your God, they would not crucify your people. But God, he knows all things. And I'm so glad he knows all things. He knew how to get us to this place. We just came out of prayer for three days and nights and fasting, seeking God for an answer. 
if he had not have done what he did, he allowed this thing to be so, so he could bring us into a place of prayer and to come before him. He's brought us to this place so that we could consider our ways. We call wrong right, and we call right wrong. So then we began as we, at the church, the body of the church, we began to incorporate the culture of the day into our edifices. The church people of God, you are the church. You, God, put himself, the Holy Spirit, the divinity of who he is in you. That way, we have no excuse for not submitting to the will of God. So then we have lawlessness. We have Marxism. We have the spirit of the false god of fire and death. Molech. That spirit of fire and death. We're looking at death everywhere in the land from the virus. And yet you have people that won't be obedient to wearing a mask. Ah, oh, help me, Lord. Help me. Help me. I don't understand that. You won't wear a mask and put on gloves to protect yourself. But when you incorporate and take on the society beliefs and not the belief of God, oh God, you subject to do anything. You call it fake. And we're at 150,000 deaths in the United States. Help me, Lord. We're here in Michigan and we're suffering and we're going toward a number of 6,000 deaths. 50,000 cases in one night in, in Florida, Arkansas, fires everywhere, fire everywhere, hurricanes. Lord, help us see. Can you not identify this with the uh, uh, revelations? Revelations, the book of revelations. If you believe it or not, we're looking at a preeminence of it. I often tell my children, and they laugh at me. I say, well, I'm going to be caught up before uh, 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 the first uh, six years, uh, the first three years of the Great Tribulation. They laugh at me. I say, I won't be here. I'm going to be gone. My heart can barely take the lawlessness that's in the land. The Marxism that I see, the woven, hidden agendas in society. Men and women of God do not believe that this enemy is just fighting you. I learned a long time ago that this word says Satan. He said to uh, the, the, the boys, he said, look at here, a Jesus I know, and an apostle Paul, him, I know, but who are you? That's the type of folks Satan show up for. What we are looking at is Satan being an operation in power over entire, over entire nations, not just the United States, but throughout the world. How do I know that? I see it because God is allowing this pandemic to touch the world. Uh, Satan has a system like your army with, with generals and captains and chiefs and sergeants. He had to send out generals to go across the world and he himself, because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And so God, look at here what we fight. It is imperative, saints, that we nail down spiritual warfare. The other uh, uh, enemy I want you to look at is the enemy of God, G-O-G, -G, God, that false God. 
He is a God of tyranny. Look at us, look at us. And he has a totalitarian control. What does that mean? That means he wants to take total control and his systems be permeated through, oh God, throughout the United States, throughout Belgium, throughout Italy, China, Russia, you name the countries. This isn't just about the United States, but it takes a man to put forth the efforts to make this thing happen. So then you look and you have our president who makes deals with China, who makes deals with Russia. When you study revelations, you will find that these are the countries we looking at to be at war with. These are the countries we looking at that will rise up against Jerusalem. Just in case you didn't know, I'm going to drop this point. We own our way back to the promised land of Jerusalem. When Jesus returned, his feet shall hit Mount Zion. Oh, what a grateful, wonderful, and awesome day. But I don't want to, I'm, I'm about to leave you all. So, so I'm going to try to hold it down. But, but right here is why you must embrace Ephesians chapter uh, uh, five, chapter six. You must get this word down and master spiritual warfare. We cannot fight this spiritual battle in a natural format. What am I saying? Don't dare think that I'm saying that we should not protest. I tell you all the time, the constitution is here on my desk. And I read the Constitution of the United States. But even graver, I read this word of God and study it to show myself approved. So children, in your warfare, you are fighting Marxism. You are fighting globalism. What is globalism? It is it's a worldwide scope of policy that not only is in your states, of the United States of the Americas, but it is cast throughout the world. Don't believe that just because you look at the council and they mad at each other and, and, and the World Health Organization money was uh, distracted from them. Don't believe that they are all mad. I'll give it to you very simply. Haven't you seen husband and wives that look like they mad at home? But when they get out in that world, they want force. You better know it. You better know it. And nothing can come in between them. You need to know it's just that simple when it comes to world politics. Help me, Holy Ghost. This world assembly. Now, let me tell you what Revelations calls them. Revelation calls them, number one, the first beast. That beast is the Antichrist. The Antichrist comes in smooth, and he comes in as a helper, and he comes in to gather the people to support him. He says that he loves Israel, but yet and still, the Bible says that he is going to trick Israel. Right now, Israel believes that the Americas is behind them. Okay, don't be tricked. I'm telling you now, don't be tricked because this word says that they shall trick Israel. The Antichrist, the first beast, shall trick Israel. And then we look at the second beast. How do we run society? By the prophet. When it was set up, when, when the kingdom was set up, you had a king and you had a prophet. That's back in Solomon. That's back in David. You got you got to know this word because I'm I'm going there. I'm 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 going there. You got to understand that the prophet is going to speak out of his mouth according to the word of God. People will believe the false prophet, and the false prophet will support 
the Antichrist. Now that's in Revelations. Study it for yourself. Now, what am I trying to tell the saints of God? Put on the whole armor of God so that we may fight against the wiles of the devil. So we'll know what we're praying for. What are we interceding for? Intercession means you stand in the gap of another. And so we've been standing in the gap for the United States over the last three days. And we asked the nation to come together in prayer. Now we took those three days, but I'm asking again, nation, United States of America, preachers everywhere, servants of God, please come together and let's fight this Satan together in warfare. Let's tear the kingdom down. Well, some might ask, well, if we're going to do that, and Revelation says uh, that, that, that the Antichrist is going to be and the false prophet is going to be, Isaiah says it this way in chapter 59 and 60. God himself looked for the intercessors. Children, it is behooving us. He has laid the weight at our feet that we must fast and we must pray. Daily do I walk with him so that he may speak to me and I hear both sheep. I may hear the words of the Lord. I need a word from the Lord. I love that song. I love it. I love it. Why? Because I always need to hear from God. I don't want to become self-engrandized and walking according to my own wisdom, but I need the wisdom of God. These are the spiritual enemies we are fighting. Now, let me bring it down so you can see it a little clearer. When we look at spirits, know this principle. They always come together. If you find a man that's an alcoholic, he's a liar. He got some other stuff going on. They don't just come by themselves. If you smoke weed, Hold on, I know you don't believe it, but then we don't become enough. Then you go to the next pharmacia, uh, cocaine. That ain't enough to crack cocaine. Now you're so crazy until you want something different than that. Lord, help us, Jesus. These spirits do not come by themselves. So we have a spirit of fear going on in the earth. Therefore, you have a spirit of anxiety that has been released in the earth. Why? Because when you're fear, you don't know what you're in fear of because you can't see it. You are anticipating what could be based upon what could be that may never be you set in fear of and the enemy has you stalled in spot and cannot move forward. Then we look at, we have a spirit of grief. Pastors everywhere, if you listen at this tape, know that your people are, will be suffering from post-traumatic stress syndrome. This level of grief in the earth, they will come back into your assemblies in post-traumatic stress syndrome, and we got to cast that thing out in the name of the Lord Jesus. Know this, these things are real for the individuals who are experiencing them. One other spirit, the spirit of violence. That's why we don't go to bed. We don't go down uh, to bed angry because if you go to bed angry, when you get up, you're somebody else. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the fact that the anger turns into something else. And the next thing you know, there's bitterness set up in your heart. You can't stand to hear uh, Lucy saying, uh, you, you, can't, you don't want Fred coming back because it changes the nature of who you are. The Bible says anger, but sin not. You cannot carry that stuff up in your heart. 
it depresses and holds you back from prospering, but it changes the nature of who you are. In other words, you give your power, you relinquish who God has described you to be to becoming something that you are not, to becoming that that is being created out of this anger, out of the bitterness. Then we go from bitterness to murder. How do you get to murder? There are people that I deal with and I can't understand. I'm looking at them trying to figure out, this guy don't look like he would murder anybody. But the spirit of anger is a spirit of murder in its infantile stage. We rebuke the spirit of anger. Don't you see the domestic violence has risen in the United States? We can't house the people. People are closed in. They don't have coping skills. Pastors grab hold to it. The people must be taught coping skills skills. Get you a psychologist, a therapist hooked up to your people. Help your people. Not only are we to deal with them spiritually, we have accountability to deal with them mentally. We have that accountability. When God put those souls in our hands, he didn't just say, get them saved. No, we have a total experience of the people that we must deal with. We must deal with them physically. We must deal with them mentally. We must deal with them psychologically. We must deal with them emotionally because you feel uh, uh, J.D. need to get over that. That don't mean J.D. can get over it because you can. No, send J.D. and I'm just giving you all parable expressions, send her to a counselor, help them. This is why we're here in the Sabbath. Leadership, we got to get ourselves together. Our mission is not just to feed the hungry, but our mission also encompasses the whole man, the entire man. That is who we are to assist we do not want to disciple broken people. We want to disciple broken people to take them to a level that they're no longer broken. Then they can go out and disciple and bring people in. Have you not heard that broken people causes harm and hurt and pain to others? If you're in pain, you give pain. You cannot give what you don't have. Oh, help me, Lord. This is dealing with spiritual warfare. Racism. Racism has been uh, 400 years. Racism was here before then. Racism is an enemy of the people. Don't you know Satan just didn't wake up yesterday and say, yeah, let's let black people hate brown people and you, you're not light enough. In your own African-American race, we have partialized people because they were darker and you were lighter. The girl with the long hair and the light skin was the prom queen. If you didn't look like that, you couldn't be the prom queen. Help, I'm trying to help somebody this morning. Just listen at what I'm saying. Racism, I'm an officer of the court and I have gone into the court and my colleague before me was white and the sheriff has asked him uh, and told him, come on in, man, come on in. And he gets to me and say, uh, uh, who are you, an attorney? And I've been practicing over 20 years, going to the same court. That's nothing but an inbred systematic fault of African-Americans. And, and the thing is, People would want you to believe, well, how do you get that out of all of that? Because I discern the spirit. I got the Holy Ghost and he tells me what's going on. But I'm not fighting that battle because I got a war to fight. 
So while he's being little, I'll allow him to be little in his state. But I got a war to fight, so I don't have time for that kind of foolishness. I just rebuke the demon in the name of the Lord Jesus. Because, see, the strategy is to get me off of my mission. My mission is greater than one person saying, oh, are you an attorney? I know what the underlying uh, factor is. I just rebuke the demon and keep on in my way. I'm going to deal with one more. The spirit of greed. The spirit of greed. Here we have greed, you know? And, and the thing about it, when I was coming up, because our society was as it was, the African Americans in Detroit lived in what was called Black Bottom. Now, if that ain't a stigma and a mind uh, debilitating uh, uh, scope, idea, you're talking about ideology and society, the African Americans lived in what they call Black Bottom. They migrated from the South for better jobs with Ford Motor Company and, and General Motors and Chrysler. They came this way uh, in order to accomplish better for their families. But all they did was left one level of racism that was blatant in the South and came to the North where it was a hidden agenda. The North needed the people. So they didn't really care what color you was because we're dealing with the spirit of greed. They just wanted to make the money. And they made the companies on the backs of the African-Americans. And, and the Holy Ghost telling me to speak to it. General Motors, Ford Motor Company, Chrysler, they all were built on the back of the Southern African-American the black people, the Negro, that's how those companies were built. And now they want to discriminate and say they didn't know this racism was in their cultures and in their companies. The devil is a liar and he be damned. They knew, but it take protests and voices to bring them out. Watch this. God got a timing and a season for everything. So now it is the season to deal with the matter at a different level. The statutes of, uh, have, are being torn down. Uh, uh, Jackson, and, and you guys know all the statutes in the South. Don't you know the Confederates still wanted to propagandize these opportunities? Because they want the black man, every time he look at one of those statues, to keep him in place. Keep him in place how? Mentally, mentally, mentally. But I thank God for Jesus that he's moved in this time. I need you all to do your study in history. That's another assignment. I'll be back uh, this week to talk to you about considering the matter. Know your weapons. Understand the uh, uh, history that you're dealing with. You must know the word of God. The way is right here in the word of God. He says, the writer says, there is nothing new under the sun. Trust me, there is nothing new under the sun. Everything you see here has happened before. There's different levels. There's different strategies that come about. But yet and still, the wisdom of God, the wisdom of his word is where you answer at. If you go back and you look at David, David was the second king of Israel. Israel wanted a king. Solomon was the first king. The thing that brought Solomon down was and no longer was king, was disobedience. God gave him an assignment. He didn't do the assignment. 
So the prophet came and told him, the kingdom has been stripped from you and there has been another king that has been appointed. Right now, there is another king that has been appointed. I tell you, it won't always be this way. God has is turning this thing around and we will come out of it. If you look back through history, you see the pandemic that occurred. Polio, the measles, all of the different pandemics that have come. We are still here. We're still here. I thank God I have to say it every time. It may seem repetitive and redundant, but I thank God that coronavirus never touched the mission, the temple of Zion Worship Center. I thank God none of the babies were sick. None of the children of God have been sick. Now, I preach to them all the time and the pastors preach to them all the time. Wear your gloves and put on your mask. Don't go into large crowds. Social distance. Do that. And when we, when God allows us to go back into the assembly, we're going to be obedient to the word of God. We're going to be obedient from the scientists perspective that have made recommendations. We're going to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. I have colleagues who are going back into their edifices and I say, God bless you. But the overseer is seasoned in years and I must use wisdom, not only for me, but for my people. But the thing about it, God has given us these people, but if the overseer is not obedient, then I'm setting up for the rest of the people not to be obedient. Leadership, I'm saying to you, you must role play what your people need to see. Another word, you must model the behavior that you want to see in your people that God have assigned to you. These buildings belong to God. The people belong to God. We don't own none of this stuff. All of it belongs to God. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Take wisdom, get understanding, but we're going to focus in on dismantling this enemy. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray now that your word has gone forth as a mighty sword for the people who believe that they would want to become a part of your kingdom. You can send in uh, uh, a, a word to our Facebook, to our messenger site. You can call the pastors, the telephone number, Zion Worship Center, Wyandotte. We have a web page. We have an app. You can follow us on our app, uh, 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 churchapp.com. And you go to Zion Worship Center and you'll see the founder's picture. We love that man of God and the work that he planted for us. So you can go there. You can make telephone calls. You can text. You can email Pastor Valerie White, Pastor Mark White. They will tutor you. They have elders who have assignments. They will disciple you, walk you through this word of God. They are people of prayer. All you got to do is say, Lord, I believe. By faith, you come and say, I believe that Jesus Christ, I believe he's the son of God. I believe that he died on Calvary's cross for my sins. And I want to become a part of his kingdom. These people of God will receive you by faith and you will become a part of this family that I'm speaking about. There is peace 
in this family. My sister saying, I love living this kind of life. I love living this kind of life because it is a blessed life. It is a life of peace, a life of fullness and wholeness. And you won't be living in fear. You won't be afraid. You will learn the truth of the word of God. Be good to yourself. Don't be tricked by the enemy. This is a good time to receive Jesus Christ in your life. It is a blessed life. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. And I'll see you again this week on Consider the Matter. Be blessed all day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together, saints. Hallelujah.